Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Pentaho World 2017. Brought to you by Hitachi Ventara. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Pentaho World. Brought to you, of course, by Hitachi Ventara. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, James Kobielis. We're joined by Charles Gaddy. He is the Business Development Manager at Melissa Data. Thanks so much for joining us. Great, thank you for having me. So tell us a little, tell our viewers a little bit about Melissa Data and what you do there. Okay. Well, Melissa is a uh, data quality and identity assurance company. So we have been around for 30 years, and um, we're a 30-year-old startup, you might say, and uh, very, very innovative in what we do and the way we address our problems. We are the strategic partner for Pentaho as it relates to data quality. So uh, most of our data quality solutions are embedded and available within the Pentaho stack. So my particular role there is, is to facilitate global sales and alliances, and Pentaho is one of our global alliances. Okay, so, so, so that's the, it's a strategic alliance, and so what is your relationship now with Hitachi Ventera? That's a great question, because now that we're with Hitachi Ventera, one of the things we're focusing on is a, a strategy around data quality blueprints. Data quality blueprints are um, something that Pentaho brought into that, that, that relationship or that new company, right? And it's a powerful way that they sell their solutions and craft the message around their solutions in a way that sound less technical and more engaging, I think. It's, now we're getting to a bit of an opinion there. And so we're very excited to be one of the first companies from a partner perspective to do a blueprint that's not strictly Pentaho based. Is it a consultative, when you're talking about blueprints, is it a consultative marketing and sales tool or is it a solution accelerator template or a bit of both? You stole my thunder. I was going to say, I think, it's a bit, I think it's a bit of both, actually, yes. Um, um, I, the, the nice thing that I've seen about the other ones they've done and the one that we're crafting is you're taking a, a use case, effectively, and you're, you're, you're breaking down what, what you're bringing to that use case with a sprinkle of technology so that they know it is a technical solution as well as a consultative sale. Then you're, you're telling them about the problem you're going to solve with it, and then you're, you know, the expected outcomes after you've solved that problem. So the first use case is around... Um, it's around data, customer data quality with an online retail, right? So everything from preventing packages from being misplaced by using address verification and, and geocoding, right, in order to prove the, the quality of address data that you're shipping, all the way through to customer demographics. So you can understand and overlay uh, demographic information about the customers you're targeting online. All of these solutions, we bring the data piece of that and Pentaho brings the other elements to, to make that combined uh, blueprint. So just in hearing you say those things, I, I'm thinking back to what, um, to what we heard on the main stage today about the potential of the dark side in the sense of the, the models maybe being used for nefarious reasons. I mean, mm -hmm. how, how do you guard against that? Well, you know, there's there's that AI component, which was very much of the you know uh, Skynet com comment, I believe. Um, and then there's uh, there's data quality, which having been around data quality for quite a while, there's a rules-based element to that that isn't necessarily AI-based. So you don't necessarily have as much of that dark side to deal with. What you are, you know, rightfully uh, pointing out is the idea that you're using elements of data that represent someone's identity potentially, right? And how do you protect and safeguard that? And and our 30 years in the business really. really really gives us an insight on how to protect the, the data in ways that uh, ensure the quality of it, but then also you know, ensure that it's not used for nefarious purposes, like I said. Okay, so, so as you know, Pentaho co-founder James Dixon coined the term the data lake. Mm -hmm. um, so how has Melissa partnered and integrated um, mm -hmm. with, with Pentaho in that way? And how does data governance and quality ride upon and leverage the data lake to be effective? Okay, so it's a two-part question. Let's see <laughs> okay. So looking at it from the perspective of, of, of what what was described in the data lake. You know, things are going into the data lake, right? Well, you can take two approaches to it, I guess. You can try to boil that data lake, which is very challenging, uh, you know, or you can, you can extract quality information out of it. And so, data quality, whether you're pushing data quality into the lake or whether you're trying to extract actionable intelligence out of the lake, fits. On, on both sides, right? And gives you that step towards analytics and intelligence that you need, right? Otherwise, it's a lake. The other side you mentioned is the governance side of it. So um, our components that run and our services that run as a part of what is offered with Pentaho give elements of uh, feature like profiling. So you're able to profile the data as it's moving between these different places, see the anomalies, potentially address the anomalies if that's something you need to do, or at least be aware of them so you know what's going on, right? And you're constantly monitoring. 
Is that, does that involve AI or machine learning on your end to do that, to the anomaly detection? Um, there, there's, the data lake? there's elements of our technology that leverage pieces of that for sure. I mean, I wouldn't call it a full-blown AI from that perspective, but um, there, there is some patents and some proprietary technology that we have um, that, that gives us a unique approach on how to profile that data and, and how to make that, that profiled information actionable within Pintaho. So you, you talked about the, the retailer use case and that's mm -hmm. how we can make sure the packages are delivered to the right places and, and the demographic. What are some other examples of ways that we could use Melissa data? Okay, so as luck would have it, the first use case, the first blueprint we're doing is the customer one I just mentioned. But we're already talking with Hitachi Vitara about the idea of doing a financial services one. Right? And so in that FinTech space, not only would you be able to leverage mass matching deduplication, which they call more of an identity resolution in that element, but you'd also be able to leverage the elements of data that we bring to bear to say that you are who you say you are. So you bundle those together in a, in a FinTech or a financial services model, and you've got a different use case from customers and online retail, but you still have a very compelling joint offering as you're pushing data through. Which is particularly relevant in light of the Equifax breach, which will yes. haunt us for the rest of our lives, we keep hearing yes. about. Yes, so you have to be very careful with the data that you utilize, absolutely. One of the terms we keep hearing a lot is future-proofing. Uh, what does that mean to you at Melissa Data? How, how do you describe your approach to future-proofing your right. business? So, um, it's interesting because, you know, as I mentioned, we're, we're pretty much a 30-year-old startup, so as a function of that, we've future-proofed ourselves because we've evolved and adapted. And you, you have to be nimble, you have to, um, you have to be agile as well as embracing agile concepts, which, you know, there's two different meanings there, if you will. And so, in looking at that, you want to make sure that you've got the right technology set and, and that, that that technology set can be easily adapted and evolve over time. Right, um, and I think those are the key things we've done as a company with the solutions we've built, and much like I heard today on, on the keynote that Hitachi had focused to do, we've done a very similar thing because we started in direct marketing with uh, a database of zip codes, and now we offer matching and we offer these cloud solutions and identity. So we, we're, we've had a very similar track to that story you heard earlier. You've also kept, you've, you've said it a couple times, you're a 30-year-old startup. Yeah. How do you stay innovative? I mean, now you are a 30-year-old startup that now has employees in four locations across the U.S. Um, dealing in, in huge businesses. Mm -hmm. How do you keep that startup mentality, the hungry mentality, mm -hmm. and, and the, the hacky mentality, I guess I should well, say Well, too. you know, one of the real advantages we've got there is that our, our CEO and founder um, is, is, has always innovated from the first company before Melissa all the way up through, uh, through today, he's always been one to say, we need to try that next thing, right? Pintaho, five or six years ago, was that next thing that he and our VP of strategy said we should try, and now I'm sitting here with you today. So there's a, you know, there's, there's a top-down, bottom-up approach, if that makes sense to you, because if you have an idea, you can bring that idea forward as well. You can see that the next thing, and Hitachi Vitar has been saying that in spades today here at this event. Mm -hmm. It's also a Wikibon uh, uh, research focus. The edge, edge computing, edge mm -hmm. analytics, ed data, machine data coming from edge devices. Mm -hmm. How um, is Melissa Data in partnership with Pentaho um, moving towards this edge to outcome frame of reference or frame mm -hmm. for building innovative solutions? Where, where does that fit with your roadmap right. going so, forward? So, you know, our perspective on that is, much like when we first engaged with them, data was going into the data lake, just let's get it all in there. Let's yeah. Get it all in there, get it all in there, get it all in there, right? Well, eventually you have to make that data actionable. You're going to have a reverse scenario with the edge. There's a lot of data, small amounts, small chunks that are going to be everywhere. I think it was talked about being on cell phones and everywhere else. The idea that you can extend the reach of data quality along with the reach of analytics to actually make sure that you're getting the best data you can to feed those micro analytics, um, you know, to feed that, that's a critical part that we see as potential. Looking ahead, to the, what, are the, what are some of the problems that you want to solve? I mean, just sort of, the next year, the next five years, what are some of the things that you're thinking about and keeping you up at night right now? Well, we're doing some very interesting things with um, globally unique identifiers, I'll call them that, right? Um, not a GUID in that sense, no. but um, the idea that every address on the planet could be indexed, right? Mm -hmm. And then the idea behind that was every email and every phone and every identity around that could be indexed. And then when you're dealing with a massive amount of indexes, it becomes a lot faster and a lot easier to match, to dedupe, to do other data quality tasks. So um, it's one of the projects that our CEO is very interested in, is this, um, this sort of uh, indexing or massive indexing table concept, right? 
right? And so that's one of the things I know we're very focused on as an organization and how that can feed all of our other technologies. How would that work? I mean, I know you're, it's a research process in motion, right. but. And keep in mind, I am the head of global sales and alliances, so don't, don't bust that out of the t too technical a question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so this is an identity <laughs> resolution at a massive scale. Does it involve an internet of things, almost like a, you know, you know, slap me on the wrist, uh, mm -hmm. like a graph, a social graph of you and all of the identities you may have running on various edge devices, uh, you I, meaning I, I, a, a I, user. I, I think there is the potential for pieces Remember, of I'm that. I'm a geek here, yeah, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> There's a potential for pieces of that to be used in that way, like an example we got approached about was uh, someone who wanted to have a cookie that represented the address that they just captured from this particular interaction on the web, right? Yeah. Well, imagine if you could use this table of addresses that was indexed, right, to get that number back and you just stored that number constantly with that cookie. You'd never have to store that address data again. You could match that index against other indexes and the, the, the uses go on and on and right. on. So it's not complete in any way, so I wouldn't want to venture to answer okay. the complete part of your question, but the idea that you can represent things with a series of numbers is how the internet got started effectively, right? So you could look at something similar. Right. So you're here at Pentaho World, and you're, you said you're a biz dev manager. What is your? What do you hope to take away from it? I mean, are you are you talking you mean outside of business? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> outside of some, getting some deals done, exactly. Yeah. Um, but what what are, what are you learning? What are you hearing? What are you sharing? Best practices, and and how do you do that here? Right. Well. You know, we're, we're, we're pretty tightly connected into different elements of what is now Hitachi Vitara, right? So we work with their office in Singapore, we work with, you know, work with them in, engaged all over the world on, on many different fronts. And so it's nice to be here, one, so that you can literally put some faces with some names, right? Um, and as you look at some of their different initiatives like cybersecurity that I've seen over, it's over there somewhere, and then some of the initiatives they got going, they've got going, they, they march a bit in lockstep with what we're doing and we're looking the nice thing about being here is the ability to, to sort of reconcile that and see and talk about how we could go forward together with those other, those elements, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Charles, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It's been a great talking great. to you. Thank yeah, you for having excellent. me, I appreciate yeah. it. Great. Yeah. We will have more from theCUBE's live coverage of Pentaho World in just a little bit. Oh.